Hi all. Um, we are going to continue with the techniques for sampling. Um, this is session 11. Now we're going to talk about particle filtering. So let's say like we have sequences of um, random variables or sequences of data. Uh, we want to try to use these sampling techniques to uh, estimate them, right? And this is really useful for instance robotics or uh, computer vision or uh, speech and how can we use these particle filters um, to, to solve them. So you may have heard of them in, in these other um, settings. So now let's try to see them through a statistical lens, okay? So what we are interested in is in obtaining um, this distribution over here. When I have a set of uh, set latent variables and uh, given some observations. And what I wanna do is approximate this with um, the summation of some samples such that I'm having some weights that are normalized and I will have some uh, unitary response here with respect of my observe, uh, sorry, sample states of all these states over here. Now, my, my thing is, if I want to do this, what is my proposal, right? So I need some proposal Q of the same shape as my distribution. So I will need to have this thing over here. One Q with respect to my C's that are sample, given my observed uh, data. And the thing with this is that my weight or my T weight uh, that is sample, is proportional to the ratio, right? To the ratio of these two things over here. So it should be this thing that you are seeing now. Q, C, I, T, Y, one, T, right? And I wanna do, I wanna compute the ratio with respect of the sample sequences, right? And if you want to normalize it, this W, T here, uh, it just becomes, as we have with important sampling, it's just the weight, sorry, the T, the weight for the T sample over the sum of all the samples for the T um, element in the sequence. Now, if you expand this, this uh, distribution over here, what you end up with is the following, right? So if you expand the sequence and then you use some Markovian properties on it, you will end up, you will end up by getting the last observation, my teeth observation, with respect to my latent variables and the rest of my sequence times my latent variables that depend on the rest of the sequence, one of two, t minus one. Oh, uh, and this is, okay, maybe I want to divide this, right? So, uh, forget this. So, py t given y, one of two, t minus one, right? So, I'm just computing the, the conditioning over here. Now, these, uh, PYT, if I assume my Markovian properties, will depend only on the latest uh, latent state over here. So YT given CT and my PCT, I can apply again and do the posterior over here, PCT even C one of two T minus one on uh, my one y one t minus one up to t minus one times the p c and the rest right the t minus one given y y up to t minus one over my p y t given y one t minus one right so um if I just remove this division over the, the observed variables over here, 
this will be proportional to the yt given ct and I can apply a Markov again here pct given ct minus 1 and I will have my history over here with my pc1 given t minus 1 and y1 up to t minus 1 right now this is the the Markovian way of my of my uh, of my sequence. Now my proposal it will become um, something with the same shape, right? My Q C one up to T given Y one up to T is equal to my Q C T given. Um, C1 up to T minus 1, Q, C1 up to T minus 1, even Y, 1 up to T minus 1, right? So I, I wanted to maintain uh, some similar shape. Now my weights, they become my W, T, S, they should be proportional to the division of those, these two things, right? So I will have my P uh, Y T given uh, C T observe times P C T observe sorry sample times C T minus one sample times my history right my C one to T minus one sample given my observations over my Q's. And my Q's are Q C T given C one minus T um, sample even while minus T Q C one up to T minus one sample given one one up to T minus one. Right. Now the thing is like uh, this history over the both of them is my previous weight, right? So I can say it like, you know, this is my weight that I had, like my history in the weight times this over here. So I have my PCT given uh, T minus one and my PYT given CT sample over uh, my QCT sample CT uh, sorry 1 up to T sample Y 1 up to T and if we assume also some Markov property over here um, these end up as not depending on the whole history of my cities but only on the previous one right so just ct minus one pyt c t sample so my q over here it is going to depend only on the previous state uh, my previous data right so basically just applying Markov again. So now I have that my my next state that I don't know given some history is approximately the summation of S of my normalized weights, right? Samples times this response in C T S C T, right? And now is, uh, that is the particle filtering that, that we use. Uh, we are taking samples and weighting them based on the information that we have. And this is uh, really nice and, and works really well in, in practice, but we need to be careful because it has some, some particular issues. One that is the, the degeneracy problem, such that it will fail when we have uh, particles with negligible weight. That means like our weight is so small that it is not uh, helping anymore. So we need to somehow forget those particles that are not helping anymore. So we have two, two, two solutions to this. 
One is do resampling. And the idea is just um, generate a new set from PC, T, given Y, T, uh, Y, one up to T, and then use that new, new set, okay? So you can just uh, resample from them using, for instance, a multinomial or something like that, or do some new proposals. And within the proposals, the idea is, why don't you just take a, a, a different way of computing this these proposal over here, where the, the, the best, or like not the best, but the, the simplest will be, for instance, to use the prior. And then you just use, for instance, your uh, QCT given CT minus one sample and YT as the prior that you had. So this is your PCT given CT minus one sample. And then the whole idea is that you generate this and then test it through the weight. And see if this, uh, if this works best or not. And then you just run it through, the, through your, your method and then uh, simply uh, test and see. Um, and yeah, these methods are used, you know, and I have seen this uh, resampling proposal used a lot, which you just take those that work best and you just keep producing copies of them. Or um, you use better proposals to, to improve the method, right? The problem with the proposal is that it requires more knowledge on the problem. And the resampling is simpler in the sense of, of uh, producing more stable samples to, to work on, on these. And you will see uh, in the next uh, session that there are some more uh, robust ways of producing samples. But yeah, so that's for it. And it is, again, a really, really powerful method. And I recommend you to, to check it out and, and study and understand it because they are simple, simple ideas, but very powerful when you, once you understand them. Okay, see you later.